All right, we are now joined by Jeffrey Kaba, Service Vice President of Political Studies at the Niskanan Center. Uh, welcome to We On this morning. So we have exactly 100 days to the election. Some believe that President Biden's exit from the race, even though it wasn't surprising, has given Kamala Harris a strategic advantage. Are Republicans scrambling to address their approach, even though former President Donald Trump anticipated something like this may be happening? Um, thank you. It's good to be here. I'm not sure that Donald Trump did anticipate that Joe Biden would drop out of the race. I think the Republican team is scrambling right now because so much of their attack had been geared toward portraying Biden as old, feeble, out of touch, and Trump as comparatively energetic. Um, and now the tables have been turned on them. Kamala Harris is almost two decades younger than Donald Trump. She is vastly more articulate than Joe Biden was. She is very capable of making a case for the Democrats. And so far, the Republicans seem to be struggling to respond. And I think that uh, they want to attack her record as progressive. She has to define herself before they're able to define her. Um, but at the same time, there's also some pretty ugly stuff coming out of right-wing world in terms of painting her as a DEI candidate, playing upon racial and gender issues. Uh, I think it's going to be an ugly campaign. Can you give us a sense of where the two stand, what works for and against the former president and for and against Kamala Harris? And how do these candidates hope to win the hearts and minds of independent voters? So Donald Trump has a number of advantages. Um, his followers love him. I would say they almost have a quasi-religious veneration for him, particularly after the assassination attempt in Butler, Pennsylvania. Um, and Republicans also have some strategic advantages when it comes to the electoral colleges, uh, colleges uh, mechanisms. They dominate the rural states that count disproportionately um, in that constitutional means of determining who gets to win the presidency. Um, on the Democratic side, they've had a lot of negatives lately with really low voter enthusiasm for Joe Biden's candidacy. But now that's all very much been turned around by Kamala Harris's succeeding Biden as the nominee or apparent nominee. Um, and as you, very, your viewers will have heard, there have been record donations and numbers of volunteers. And there's a real regeneration of enthusiasm, particularly among the, the Democratic base voters, young people, minorities, um, who really had not seemed that enthusiastic about the Biden candidacy. Um, however, what the Harris campaign will need to do to win is to win over at least some of those white working class voters who had voted for Joe Biden, particularly in the swing states, but now seem inclined to not vote or maybe to vote for Donald Trump. And that very much includes independence. So I think Harris is going to actually have to disavow some of her previously progressive positions, which are very unpopular with those independent voters. Uh, and I think she needs to be strategic in making her choice of a vice presidential candidate, probably a white male from the relatively moderate part of the Democratic Party, who can win, who can win over some of those swing state voters. Right. Well, it seems like the media loves her and she has a lot of help, at least on that front here in the United States. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey Akaba Service, thank you so much for joining us on We On, and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Thank you. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.